Hey guys, welcome back to the other Rusty Beauty shop. So this is where we work on the 74TR6 and today we're gonna start assembling parts on the frame. As you know, we completed the body and it's sitting over there ready to go to the paint shop. They need to finish some more body work. I just did rough shapes here and there wherever it needed to be built up a little bit to meet the fenders and doors and everything all the panels are here and the doors the fenders the bonnet and everything they can go to the paint shop too and in the meantime we can start assembling the parts on the suspension like we planned this frame has been restored too that's not the original frame to this car uh, the original frame was in a really bad shape, so it needed to be scrapped. So this one wasn't in a in its best shape too, but we restored it. We fixed some problems here on it. So now we just need to clean it and start putting all the parts. Most of the parts are here. My friend KJ was busy cleaning them and painting them. They were de-rusted using electrolysis there were few videos about that and i was actually impressed how well that worked it's time taking a method but if you do it as you're doing something else it doesn't require too much attention you just put it in the bath and let it soak for i don't know like 24 hours so if you have time to do that i strongly recommend it anyways so all these parts have been painted yesterday I think there's some more that KJ is taking care of right now. So we should start organizing them and get all the hardware and we're gonna go from there. All right, so it's been a few years actually. I don't know, three years, four years maybe since we bought this car and took it apart. So. The parts were all over the place. Um, probably a year ago, I went through everything again and made sure that we have everything and whatever we didn't have, I ordered. And we've been gathering parts here and they were sitting in boxes over there and again all over the place. So finally now, I wanted to put everything on the table, organize it and make sure that we have everything and uh, everything that we've ordered arrived. So this is how it goes this here is supposedly the front suspension and this over there is the rear suspension the trailing arms are missing because my friend kj is cleaning them and he's gonna paint them but the rest is here and here we have brake parts so let's start with the front suspension as you can see we have upper and lower wishbones or a-arms whatever you want to call them new bow joints the old trunnions the lower plates with uh, these are the mounting brackets for the shock absorber this is for the sway bar attachment the fulcrum pins and the vertical links and this is the steering link uh, we have a rebuilding kit here for the whole front suspension. I think I checked it and I'm pretty sure we have all the parts that we need there. Bushings for the A-arms. These are, I think, the upper. Yeah, uh, so polyurethane bushings for the upper wishbone, polyurethane bushings for the lower wishbone, uh, rebuilding kit for a front hub, in the brake, backing plate. These are the rear actually, so they have to go in the back. So the front, backing plates they need to be painted sway bar with the mounting bushings and uh, links uh, i ordered new holding brackets i just kept here the old ones just to show you i don't know what happened how they got distorted this bad but when i saw them before i was like is that the original shape anyways so this is the original shape so these can go away now uh, the steering rack with new boots that we have to install, new tie rod ends, and then the mounting brackets, bushings, and these brackets that hold them down. Why do we have four? We only need two. 
And then we have the springs. These are the old springs. We're gonna reuse them with the collars and front shocks with all the bushings already on them. And here, this we don't need. And here we have whatever was left of the hardware. So when we took it apart, this is the hardware that, that came off it. Probably, and probably some of it is just random that we added to the box. Here we have all washers and uh, nuts, but I also ordered new hardware for where we were missing because most of this one is missing, I guess, or damaged like these bolts here. So whatever we can use from here, we can use, no problem. But if it is damaged or missing, we can replace with new from here. We have lock washers, we have new castle nuts for the fulcrum pins, and we have all kinds of hardware here. Uh, okay, that was the front suspension, the rear suspension, of course. We have the axles, we have the collars for the springs, uh, new boots for the axles. We don't have this boot, we only have one old and we couldn't buy new because it wasn't available. So we'll see what we're gonna do there. So the mounting brackets for the trailing arm with new bushings for the trailing arm, the old lever shocks, the backing plate, mounting bushings for the differential. The differential is not here because we need to replace the seals before we paint it here on the frame. I have all the brake components that we ordered. So we have a complete set of brake lines, including the flexible lines here. We ordered nice braided ones. What is this? Brake pads, brake shoes, rear wheel cylinders, and uh, the mounting kit for them. Also some new springs because I know that ours were old rusty and broken i think and the mounting pins for the shoes and stuff like that and that's it so i just want to clean the frame now before we start working on it not that it's not that it's not gonna get dusty again but at least we can start clean here all right so we're gonna start by installing the bushings on the lower control arm or the lower wishbone so this is the rear end where the studies normally i wouldn't put grease on this side of the bushing but since these bushings are one piece they're not cut it's gonna be hard to squeeze them in there it's a good idea to have some lubrication there so i'm just gonna use this socket underneath hopefully it's big enough oh, that's tricky <laughs> why it slides on me this way as a beginning we're gonna put it straight there and we're gonna put this to guide it let's see if that's gonna work again okay. it's going in now Just needed a little guidance. <laughs> it even popped on the other side. Wow. And of course the sleeve. Go. 
Okay, one done, three more to go. Next, we're gonna install the bushings on the upper wishbones. And the bushings are virtually the same bushings, but without the metal sleeve inside. That's the only difference. Next one. All right, so next we can install the rear end with the bushing, which again is close to this stud, on the brackets. The brackets go this way. This is up, this is down. The cut corner is down. So we can pre-install them. Half inch bolt. I'm not sure which way they go if there is direction for the bolts so I'm gonna go and test on the car okay. all right so here let me show you we have two sets of holes in the front and the back so this is the passenger side and the brackets go on the holes that are closer to the front the, like this so this bracket the bolt is okay and for this bracket the bolt is gonna be okay this way if we turn the bolt around we're not gonna be able to fit it there i guess so the bolts obviously go from the front to the back so for the passenger side so we're gonna do them this way my passenger side all right so like we said here these go on the holes that are closer to the front and there's a very important moment here normally when I take suspensions apart there are shims here and I count how many shims are there and I record that so I know for the future when I assemble it the thing is the shims are individual for each frame when they do the alignment in the factory they shim them in and out as far as they need to the thing is this is not the original frame to this car and we didn't take it apart so we don't really know how many shims were there if any so i'm just gonna assemble it without shims now and uh, once the car is ready we're gonna have to take it for alignment and they're gonna have to determine whether it needs shims or no so for now no shims actually as i'm editing this video now i just realized that we did take apart this car this was the donor car that we disassembled and we took the frame and returned the body to the owners and from these pictures you can clearly see that we have three and three shims on the right side and one and one on the left side so that's a good news because i can go back and uh, install the shims as per these pictures now So this side is the same on the front holes. I don't know why there are four holes there. I have no idea. So here, now I'm gonna start with installing the fulcrum pin, which I've seen installed wrong way. The right way is this way. It's kind of, counterintuitive because looks better this way right <laughs> no it is coming this way so we have new bolts for here with lock washers now here i forgot i had this problem the Cotter pin is snapped inside here. I should have taken care of that before, but I didn't. So now I'm gonna have to deal with it on the frame. I don't wanna remove it again. Plus actually this is easier here because it's solid. Otherwise I have to mount it, mount it on a vise. Not sure it's gonna come out. Okay, so this is a good size drill bit.
Okay. Now, these upper wish bones, they are handed obviously. So they can be installed this way or this way. So how do we know? By the letter. Normally they have letters here, R, I don't know if you see it. Let me try and show it to you. Here, R and L on the other side. So if you install them this way, they're for the left side of the car. If you install them this way, they're for the right side of the car. And we are on the right side. So this is how we're gonna install them. And there you go. Now washers and the castle nuts. Now, what is the torque spec for here? I don't know. We're gonna have to consult the book later. Like I said, and do and torque all the nuts, all the fasteners. All right, so next we're gonna start with a tronion and just so you know, they are handed. They have threads inside and the threads for the right side of the car are the right-handed threads. For the left side of the car are the left-handed threads. So these are all, all the parts that we need. We have four washers, four seals, four shields, like protective shields for the seals, four bushings, or they call them bearing also, bearings also, polyurethane bearings, uh, two sleeves, a bolt, a nut, we need a cotter pin as well, which we don't have here, and a boot for the top of the tronion. So what I like to do is I just assemble them on the table, the seals, I put the seals on the table because I used to put them on the car and that was really tricky. Uh, here on the table, it's much easier. You can do it almost one handed, you see, because the seal has a square profile doesn't roll around so once you put it on the bearing that's where it goes then you have a protective shield that goes with the flange towards the bearing towards the seal to cover the seal and then we have a washer that covers it on the other side so that's one set let's make four of these there you go just make sure that it's not twisted anywhere. Shield and washer. Okay, so now here, I already made sure that the bore is clean inside and the bushings fit well before I even did anything so that's how it goes now the washer is not gonna stay i'm just using the washer to hold everything in place while i'm pushing it in but you see the shield stays between the arm and the bushing the bushing is sandwiching it while we still have the seal on the edge of the bushing This one is a little bit tighter, but that's fine. Okay. Then we have the sleeves inside with some grease. So I'm putting grease on the outside of the sleeve, of course, because that's the bearing surface. But I'm also going to put inside on the bolt when I'm putting it, putting the bolt pin because we don't want it to seize inside. I'm also going to grease the washers a little bit because they slide on the side of the, the bushings. So I want them a little bit greased. We want the boat greased, the stem of the boat, of course. 
we have the first washer then carefully not to push the seals out or the bushing of course or the sleeve and then we have a second washer Then we have the tronion, which also needs to be greased here because that's also a bearing surface on the side. And then we have the next washer. Carefully not to push the seal out. And the last washer. So this, this boat on the schematic, it's shown this way. That's why I'm doing it this way. It goes from the back to the front. And at the end we have the nut, which again I'm not going to torque, I don't know how much I need to torque it, I'm just going to snug it finger tight and later we're going to torque it and that's it. Now inside I like to fill these up with gear oil. So I'm filling it up halfway through the threads because when I put the vertical link inside, that's gonna push a lot of oil up and it's gonna squeeze it out. I know that for sure. And then we need the boot. It doesn't have a lip here, which means it just stays on top like that. And then we have the vertical link. Here on the vertical link, I already installed the bow joint. So we're gonna deal with that a little bit later. Again, the threads that are right-handed threads, just go in and you can spin it on. So how tight? Well, you have to go all the way till the end until it stops and then turn it back to the outer position. So you see it started coming out already, so I put a little bit too much, but that's fine, we're gonna wipe it. comes from everywhere okay so this is where it stopped and I'm just turning it back that's where we want it we made a mess that's normal we have to wipe it now now we can mount the bone joint up there I don't know why I mounted it in advance, that makes it harder. So here, the outer bolt, like the outer bolt goes from front to back, and the inner bolt goes from back to front. I don't know why, it's just what it is on the schematics, so I do it the same way. Right, so next we're gonna use our my trusted homemade spring compressor and we're gonna mount the spring. Now it is bent this way because uh, how do I explain that? Because I'm using this plate underneath. So for the bottom. For the bottom if I want I can use this washer for my and my spring compressor can go through but in this case my nut is gonna end up too deep there and it's gonna be really hard to spin it with a wrench here so that's why I use this plate because this plate keeps my nut here and spacers away from like further out. 
but the thing is this plane of the plate and the plane of where the spring goes are different and that's why my spring compressor is bent so let's put our assembly together we're gonna put one collar here at the bottom and then the spring then another collar at the top and this whole thing can go now from underneath then I can put this big washer on top spacer a washer and a nut okay <laughs> I didn't have a threaded rod when I built this spring compressor that's why I use this square tube in the middle and that makes things a little bit complicated for me but I always forget when I don't need the spring compressor I forget to build a new one and when I need it it's too late to build a new one I always use this one so anyways one day I'm gonna build a proper one but for now I'm using this one which square tube actually in the middle is helping me because I can hold the rod from spinning with a half inch wrench now if you have a threaded road with long threads then you can keep one of the nuts stationary the bottom one can be even welded on or you can uh, drill it and run a cotter pin through it or whatever you want to do for me only tightening only the top is not enough because i don't have enough threads my bolt there is not long enough that's why i need to tighten top and bottom now i'm going to start with the top nut and i'm going to tighten it just enough to make sure that i have the the rod going through the entire nut this will assure that 100 percent of the threads of the nut are holding okay just so my threaded rod shows up above the nut and now i can start tightening the bottom all the way till the end of the threads of my bolt <laughs> Okay, I'm out of threads at the bottom, so now we're gonna start tightening the top. So we're keeping an eye here on this road when it's gonna come into the hole. We can put one of our bolts here to guide. Actually, on the other side, this road is closer, so I'm gonna try to put it in. Uh, not really. So now we can put our nut on this one for safety. Oh, we can actually put a nut there too now. I'm gonna keep working out our way until I can put the first and the last on the other side too. There you go. And the nut on the back. Now we can tighten this. And these last nuts are, it's, it's a very good idea to tighten them now while the spring is compressed because once you release the spring, this comes on angle like this and it's really hard to reach these nuts. We can remove the spring compressor. So yeah, my spring compressor. 
all bent and everything, but works fantastic. All right, so the shock, for the bottom of the shock, we have these two like butterfly brackets that go a nut. So we're gonna leave the boat a little bit loose so we can maneuver underneath the brackets. Then the top part is pretty self-explanatory. We need to leave one metal plate and one bushing underneath and we have another one for the top once it shows up through this hole. Then we're gonna extend it uh, as much as we can. And now we can shove it from underneath and these four uh, holes need to go on the four rods that are underneath the plate. I guess you saw it earlier. There you go. And then we put new nuts on those rods or studs. Now we can put our bushing on top with our plate and tighten the nut. Now if your stem starts spinning here, there's a flat part on top which you can hold with something like adjustable wrench for example. So that's what I have near me, <laughs> too lazy to go to the toolbox. There you go. And then the second nut to lock this first one. And we have to hold with one wrench, the bottom nut, and then the top nut locks into it. So now it's not going anywhere. And yes, guys, you're right. I'm forgetting the bracket here and the bolt in the middle. I have a bolt on this side, which I'm forgetting. I'm gonna put it on. But on this side, we have a longer bolt for the center here because we need to put this bracket, which is for our sway bar. And because this bracket is wider, because there's a lip here, we have a spacer that goes under. Actually, I have to put the spacer first, like this. Uh, it's tricky. We need to be able to hold the spacer there while we're putting the bracket, there you go. Okay, and now the nut. Then we're gonna tighten them both. So right here on the tronion, there's this stopper, which limits how far you can steer. So I forgot to put that on before, so I have to put it now. Okay, we're gonna continue with the mounting bracket for the caliper, which goes this way. So it needs to go further in. It's not, it's not bringing the caliper out, it's taking it in. And it has a bolt pattern here, so you can't mix it. You can't put it upside down. And also if you take the, the wrong side, when you mount it there, your caliper is gonna end up on the front, which is wrong. I'm sorry about the noise. My colleague is working on the exhaust of the car. So he's cleaning it and painting it. So anyway, so that's how it goes. Also, you have to know that there are four different boats here that we are using. For the bottom, we are using this two shorter boats. This one is three eighths inch long, and this one is this one is three eighths inch long. This one is one and three eighths. Top we have a three a three inch long and a three and three eighths inch long, I guess. We also have to know that the top holes are through holes, but the bottom ones are threaded. We need these top washers. So the longer one here, 
the shorter one here and for the bottom again the longer one in the front and the shorter one in the back these top washers are a little bit longer so i bent them a little bit so like we said the bottom ones are gonna thread in for the top this is where our steering link goes and it goes like this on these boats if you take the other one it's not gonna fit because it's gonna end up being it's sticking up and that's not what we want we want it to stick down but we have to put also these spacers here on the boats both sides and then we can put the link there like that then we need washers and nuts of course for the top ones now we're supposed to bend these tabs to hold the boat from spinning but we're not going to do that for now because we need to torque especially the bottom ones we need to torque them first and then we're going to bend the tabs and i'm going to put this plate there so this is the reason why we have this boat that long because this is how the plate goes and it fits on this boat right there and then we need a nut uh, we need a washer and a nut and that holds our plate in place and on this side it is held by the boats for the caliper all right i went ahead with the manual and torqued all of these bolts installed the cotter pins where I needed to. Uh, it was like extremely noisy, so I saved you the struggle. And um, now we are ready to start assembling the hub. And here we have the hub and a repair kit. Like we have the inner and outer bearing, we have the seal. This is the old nut with the dewasher and a new cotter pin. Inside the hub though, we still have the old shells, as you can see here, and the one underneath. So now we're gonna have to get ourselves a drift and push the, the old racers out through these notches, and then we're gonna press the new ones in. From this side, we can push out the other one. hit the end so we need to put something around it or just put it on the vice let's do the other one so now we have the new bearings Let's take them apart and we can take out the innards and now this can go can be pressed in of course with the tapered side up don't make the mistake to install it the wrong way and it needs to be pressed all the way in i happen to have a socket that is just a smidge smaller than this so this is perfect for here I was hoping that the other side was going to fit this, but it doesn't, unfortunately. So we will see what we're going to do about the other one. Okay, so I put it in such way that it lays on this surface here, so nothing gets damaged. The racer is already in. Okay, and now for the other side, let's see how we're gonna fit in there. Yeah, just like that. 
again the same way this will go in we can use this old bearing I guess the stacking part too so I don't need to pump too much Now it's straightened, but I'm afraid that okay, it's still coming out. I still need to press it a little bit more, but I'm afraid that if I press it with this. It's not going to come out. I can try. Actually, it bottomed out. So let's see if we can still take this out. Yeah. All right. So you can use the old bearing to push in the new one. Perfect. All right. Now we can install the rotor. And we're gonna use the old rotor, which we painted, and my friend KJ actually oversprayed it, and then he went ahead with wire wheel and cleaned it. It's fine. And now let's get dirty. So, first at the back, we have to put the seal, which goes this way and it is recommended that you oil it a little bit so it just happens that i have still here the gear oil so that's what i'm gonna use just a smidge so it's not totally dry so that's first then the big bearing we need to pack it with grease, which is why I said let's get dirty. And then it can go in. Ah, okay, before we tap it in, let's pack the other one as well while we are dirty. gently because yeah there you go that's what it needed <laughs> it's like normally they go easy okay so now we'll put some grease here as well just in case just gonna put the rest of the grease inside for a good measure Then we can put our outer bearing, and then our dewasher, and our castle nut. Now here, have in mind that the seal in the back might be a little bit too thick if it's a new seal and might be holding the bearing a little bit out. So we're gonna tighten it a lot now in the beginning to make sure that we, we push the bearing all the way to the end of the shaft. And then we're gonna loosen it a little bit.
Now our plate is touching, but it's a little bit too tight. Here it is just filling that. I can't tell you how much it needs to be. What, what I do is I tighten it a lot and then I loosen it a little bit until I feel it spinning normally without dragging because dragging is not good. This means that we're putting too much preload on the bearings. They're gonna overheat, they're gonna melt all the grease. So, okay, that's it. This is where we're gonna leave it. So now we can shove our cotter pin here. Okay, and now the cup. And that's it, so I'm gonna do the other side myself. And that's it guys, I'm gonna do the other side myself. Actually, I have it partially assembled already, so I'm gonna finish it myself. And that's gonna be it for the front suspension and hubs. Uh, in the next video, I guess we're gonna do the rear suspension and then maybe we're gonna do together the steering and the, the sway bar and stuff like that. So, uh, so yeah, making progress. Finally, we started assembling it, which is a big milestone in the project where you actually start putting parts together, not taking them apart. So. Anyways, thanks for watching guys, thanks for commenting and subscribing and stay tuned for, for more videos about this project and other Rusty Beauties projects of course. So, thanks for watching guys. Bye!